What's up guys, Forgotten Lives here, representing History Profiles, and in this video, we will be talking about an alleged witch, Anna Zippel and her life. There are many aspects of witchcraft, from conjuring the supernatural and curses, to potions and spells. However, all aspects of witchcraft have to do with the devil, as that is where the power derives from. Anyway, let's dive into the video. Anna Zippel was born in Sweden in the early to mid 1600s. Nothing is known about her youth and upbringing, but we do know about her life as a woman. She was a wealthy middle class woman, and her brothers had jobs as sports instructors at the royal court. Anna was described as a tall, proud woman with elegant posture, and it was said she was extremely beautiful with a slender figure resembling that of a queen. She married a man named Bengt Brack, who owned several banks, properties, and a mill. Therefore, her life was a comfortable one. She would stay busy, however, by selling medicine made by her close friend, Mrs. Mann's daughter. Anna Zippel also had another sibling. Her name was Brita Zippel, and she had not been as fortunate as her sister Anna, and was a lower class woman struggling to make ends meet. However, Anna supported her sister and sent her money, even though it is said that the sisters were not close. Anna was a respected woman, not only was she beautiful, she was also very interested in fashion and would always turn heads wherever she went. She would wear expensive clothing and diamonds. Her hair was curly and dropped down past her shoulders. She held a place in high society and was friendly with the local mayor, Thangner's wife. She was also friends with Madame de la Vallée, the wife of the famous architect Jeanne de la Vallée of the royal house. She rubbed shoulders with the wives of very powerful and influential men of her time, quite fitting of a woman with her looks and position. Accusations began when children would describe Anna as the Queen of Blackula. Teenage girls would also say Anna had dressed them for marriage to the devil in hell. It's possible that women would invite Anna into their homes to dress their daughters, as Anna was very fashionable. Why the children would say that about Anna is unknown. They may have been jealous of her, or perhaps they were exposed to something more sinister which is why they made these claims. One day, Anna was walking down the street, and a child pointed at her, screaming, she was the one who took me to the devil. The child then fainted. The accusations didn't stop there. People claimed that the medicine she was selling were magical potions. However, the medicine she sold didn't make people more sick, so the effects of these alleged magical potions were obscure. Her former maid came forward with a number of claims and accusations. One claim was that Anna would meet with her friend, Mrs. Mann's daughter, in her room in the dead of the night, and together they would summon the devil, who would regularly fill Anna's basement with money. She also said Anna could control the spirit of a dog, who guarded her garden. In addition, she accused Anna of asking her of the first blood of her menstruation and told her to smear it on her body and write a very strange name with the blood on her forehead. She also claimed that after she left Anna's employment, she fell ill and was sick for a whole three years, insinuating that she had been cursed. Anna's husband was also accused of abducting children. Anna's sister, Brita, had survived two witch trials in the past, but they would come back to haunt her and her sister. Brita's children were questioned by authorities, and they said Anna had taken them to the Sabbath of Satan. This was a gathering of those who practiced witchcraft and Satanism and other rites. Brita's children also said Anna took them to the devil and would perform rituals and forms of black magic in front of them. Anna's friend, Mrs. Mann's daughter, the woman that made the medicines which Anna sold, was accused of abducting children. 
she was also considered to be a witch of considerable power. An example of this is when she was arrested and taken to jail. A man then shouted at her as he had heard of her crimes. Mrs. Mann's daughter's response was to spit at this man, who then died instantly. A caretaker in the jail is reported to have looked at Mrs. Mann's daughter straight in the face, and coincidentally, or perhaps not, died shortly after. This made the case against Anna even stronger, as her friend had allegedly caused these deaths with the power of the dark arts. During her trial, it is said that Anna Zippel behaved with dignity, defending herself at every turn. She was very confident in her defence. She said with great conviction that she and her husband made their wealth with hard work, and that her friend, Mrs. Mann's daughter, was no witch. She was just brilliant at making medicine. She also said she treated her children and servants very well, and made a point of saying that these accusations were because of pure jealousy. She said it didn't matter how many people testified against her, because she was still innocent. Even if all the priests and bishops in the kingdom testified, it would not matter, as she was not the things people were accusing her of. At the trial, she refused all accusations made against her, and said it was nonsense and lies. She said the claims made against her, her sister, and her close friend were all lies made from evil, spite and aggression. Nevertheless, the three were found guilty of all charges, and were sentenced to be decapitated and burnt at the stake. Anna then replied, Well, I am still innocent. God forgive you for the verdict you just made. Anna's friend, Mrs. Mann's daughter, was a prideful woman and behaved as such, showing no emotion in court. Some say this is why she was judged as guilty, as she did not cry or whimper during the trial. She later committed suicide in prison before the execution, rather taking her own life than letting an executioner do it. The day of the execution of Anna Zippel and her sister, Brita, was on the 29th of April, 1676. Brita would behave wildly, trying to escape her bonds, and fought every step of the way onto the pyre. She drew much attention, however, her fight was in vain, and I then witnessed her sister being executed, knowing she was next. At this point, Anna had lost her voice and her will to put up a fight. She was described as completely numb. She said nothing during the whole ordeal. She did not listen to the priests and did not move. Her head was sunken and she looked at the floor. The executioner and his helpers then led her up the platform with great ease. Her head was placed on a wooden platform where she remained still until a great axe came crashing down, severing her head from her body. Her corpse was then nailed to a ladder and consumed by the flames of the pyre. Thanks for listening to the video guys, I hope you liked my narration, and let us know down in the comments below if you think that Anna and her friends were witches, or if the testimonies were all fabrications. As always, if you enjoyed, make sure to like, subscribe and share, and um, history profiles, we'll see all of you in the next video. Bye!